Well, we left off learning that plants have some adaptations for life on land. And now let's take a look at how plants have diversified. So we'll have a more sophisticated version of this diagram. In other words, one that's got some professional typing in it. But let's take a look at what we're about to see. So we're about to see that there's a uh, phylogeny of plant life, starting with an algal ancestor of plants. And our time span is uh, 500 million years ago to present. Mm -hmm. And what we have is some major events in the development of plants, major evolutionary innovations, which are indicated at these little nodes in our phylogenetic tree. And the major innovations are um, I'm going to write embryos, but what I mean by that is that um, the embryos are retained within the container of the egg. Um, the female, what's called gametangium, a term we'll learn more a lot later, that the egg gets fertilized in and the embryo develops. I like to think of it as a little, a little pond that the plant makes for itself, or for its children, actually. It's so sweet. And the um, another innovation is the development of uh, vascular tissue and the third innovation is the development of seeds and over here on the right hand side i guess you know i'm gesturing but you don't see me gesturing because i'm not standing in front of you because there's not a classroom um darn this worldwide pandemic um uh, is um pictures of some plants and particularly what these are are phyla major groups of plants and they um they uh there are th there are three that i'd like to talk to you about first and these three um are plants that evolved before the development of vascular tissue um as we will see in a more elegant drawing later um these are sometimes called bryophytes. And bryophytes are plants that are non-vascular. They include, um, they include uh, liverworts. They include uh, hornworts. It's a funny name. And they include mosses. The most abundant and speciose uh, are mosses. So these are the ones that we're going to learn the most about. And the um, vascular plants, which are represented here, I'll just abbreviate VASC, um, include uh, several groups. This one here is something that's called the lycophyte, and it's basically a picture of what's called a club moss. Here is something you'd be familiar with. It's a fern, and this is the type of seedless vascular plant that we're going to learn the most about. Um, there are some um, seed plants that produce seeds that are not in containers. And these are called gymnosperms. Gymno means naked, and the seeds are more or less naked. They're not included within the container. Um, the other group of plants is called angiosperms. These are the flowering plants, and that means vessel seed. Angio, vessel, if you think of like angioplasty or angio, you know, cardiac medicine uses the word angio to mean a vessel. And the word vessel, in this case, it's a container. And their seeds are contained within a container uh, called um, an ovary. And they develop into what are called fruits. Um, so this, oops, i got to learn how to make that stop happening. I know how. Um, my computer is a touch computer, and it's annoying. Eh, now where are we? Yeah. Um, but I want to write on it. And it's, I wanna, sometimes when I put my hand down, it thinks I want to change the slide, which I don't. Maybe I do. Okay. So here's a more elegant um, view of this. Uh, basically repeating the things I pointed out. The origin of land plants about 475 million years ago. And um, the the, the, the non-vascular plants, um, liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. Um, the word bryophyte, by the way, is used in kind of two different senses. Um, it's used in a colloquial sense to mean all of the plants that are non-vascular. Um, and including hornworts, liverworts, and mosses. And it's used in a narrow sense um, to mean just mosses. 
because uh, the mosses are in the phylum Bryophyta. Each one of these groups represent a phylum. That's the group of classification just below um, kingdom, and the plants are a kingdom. And that's um, lycophytes are a phylum, including what are called club mosses. Now, you know, I, I should probably retype that, but I, I, I'm bringing it to you the way it was done by the textbook manufacturer. And club mosses probably should be one word because they're not mosses. I mean, like seahorses aren't horses. Um, and they are um, a type of vascular plant. And they um, are uh, have moss in their name. Big deal. Spike mosses and quillworts are other types of what are called lycophytes. Ferns, um, we're familiar with ferns. These are the most speciose and abundant and well-known of our seedless vascular plants. And so we're going to learn, we're going to focus on the fern life cycle when we learn about life cycles. And oh, by the way, when I mean, say, seedless vascular plants, I don't mean like seedless grapefruit or seedless watermelon, but plants that never evolved seeds. And um, that's the sense of which we mean seedless. And um, f uh, ferns, which occur in Ohio, horsetails, which don't look like ferns, but they're, they're, um, they've been discovered to be closely related to them, so they're in the same phylum. And wisp ferns, which are tropical, they don't occur in Ohio, except in greenhouses. They're cool, but they're not wild in Ohio. Gymnosperms, as mentioned before, gymno means naked, like gymnasium. Um, it's come from, I guess, it, people who didn't wear a lot of clothes and they did athletic pursuits indoors back in the day when the term first came into being. And so gymnasium, gymno means naked. The, the word sperm is unfortunate in um, this particular domain of communicating because sperm in um, in um, etymology and words means seed um, but a seed is definitely not not uh, what sperm means in life cycles sperm is a gamete it's a single cell it's um, and, and and a seed is a multicellular embryo uh, and so the word sperm is terms of being part of a word like gymnosperm means something totally different than what it means when we talk about life cycles and gametes. But um, nonetheless, um, gymnosperms and geosperms. Gymnosperms, uh, there are actually several different divisions of them in the plant kingdom. And the one that's represented here uh, is actually a conifer. It's in the phylum coniferophyta. And there's some other gymnosperm divisions. There's things called cycads, which are like tropical plants. And there's these things called nitophytes which are like desert plants they don't occur in ohio um so really to be correct th 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 and say that these are phyla we'd want to say they're conifers and oh actually i did that later on so and then this slide here i just switched the slide and i think i'll get switch to the highlighter and um what i like to show you is i i typed in in case you're curious, the um, the name of the phylum. So the phylum names end in aphita. All so it's a little standardization. So that's here's bryophyta, and remember before I said the word bryophytes is used in a narrow sense and a strict sense. It's used in a I'm sorry, a narrow sense and a broad sense. It's used in a broad sense to mean any of these non-vascular plants that have um, some features in common and are closely re and, and not only that they're re related but also the, the phylum bryophyta means just the mosses so if you say bryophytes um, in, the, in one context or another you might mean something slightly different um, the phylum that the club mosses spike mosses and quillworts belong to is called the lycophyta and the phylum that the ferns and the horsetails belong to this is called pteraphyta or pteridophyta or polypodiophyta or philisinophyta. These big category names, there seems to be a lot of not uh, complete acceptance of what the standard is. Um, so the conifers that we have in Ohio are, excuse me, the gymnosperms that we have in Ohio, um, except for um, ginkgo, which is not uh, natural but it does grow here. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention ginkgo before. Ginkgo is cool. Ginkgo, 
is in its own phylum. So if you know you if someone if you had a challenge to learn all of the organisms in a phylum, and you had your choice of which one to pick, go with go for ginkgo because then you just have to remember one plant. It's in its own phylum. Uh, and um, the other phylum you don't, you definitely don't want to pick if you, if your job is to remember learn all the all of the plants um, is the Magnolia phyta, which is also sometimes called Angiosperm phyta. Uh, and those are the angiosperms. So that's a little more technical version of, of, the, of the perfectly adequate common names. And uh, here's some pictures. So this is a picture of a liverwort. Um, liverworts have some liverworts. The well-known liverworts have uh, a body that's fairly undifferentiated. It's sort of like doesn't have a lot of structural detail. Um, that's sometimes called a thallus, T-H-A-L-L-U-S. It's a word that's used to describe a plant or sometimes a fungus that whose, whose growth form is sort of undifferentiated, sort of tongue-like or strap-like with without a lot of intricacy. So this particular liverwort has this has a, is a thallus liverwort. And it's called a liverwort because it was thought to look like the lobes of a liver. There's this ancient, what's called doctrine of signatures that so presuppose that the creator put plants on earth for our benefit to um, cure ailments and in order to tip us off as to what um, organs they would cure ailments of made the plants look like those organs so right of course that looks just like a liver yeah i don't know about you but i don't want to be out in the woods with someone with a, who has a knife who knows like what a liver looks like it would kind of uh I'd, I'd be running the other way but um, they knew. I mean, there's liverworts, there's spleenworts. Um, um, like, what about kidney shaped? Like, you know, this uh, uh, this 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 leaf is kidney shaped. Um, but I digress. Um, and this is a th thallus liverwort. This is another liverwort that's actually more typical. Um, most liverworts, about I'm going to guess eighty percent, are leafy um, and look more like mosses than liverworts. This is an example of a leafy liverwort. It's called Bizania denudata. And um, they're, 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 they're fairly similar to mosses. Uh, we'll learn some details when we focus on, on bryophytes in the broad sense, including uh, liverworts and mosses. Hey, oh, I'm sad. Oh, no, I'm not sad. I'm happy. <laughs> uh, um, I interspersed. So we looked at liverworts. Now let's look at hornworts. Here, I put the phylogeny in between the different types of plants. This is a drawing of a hornwort. Hornworts, um, the the um, the leafy part, I'm specifically avoiding some technical terms we haven't learned yet. But you know what? Spoiler alert. We're going to learn about stages in the life cycle that are called sporophyte and gametophyte. These are the um, phases of growth in plants. And the um, leafy part of bryophytes is uh, the green photosynthetic part, the persistent part, the dominant part is called the gametophyte. And the um, part, the stage of the life cycle, it's actually a separate plant that makes the spores is called a sporophyte. And oh, by the way, the suffix phyte uh, means plant. Um, yeah, we tried to start a botany club um, on, a, on the campus I used to teach at. And a lot, you know, there are a few of us that were, we were really excited about it. We call it Fight Club, Fight Club. And for some reason, nobody, nobody you know, told anybody about it. Nobody spread the word about the, the, our, our botany club, Fight Club. So I don't know, that was kind of weird. I didn't expect that. And does that joke still work? Does that, does that joke ever work? Um, uh, so the sporophytes, what are called the sporophytes, the stage in the life cycle that produces spores in hornworts kind of look like horns. Hornworts are uncommon. Um, they're tropical mainly, and there are only two or three species in Ohio, and um, they're kind of un unusual. They grow in disturbed sites. You can find them at the edge of farm fields, sometimes on rocks. They're not very common. There's some teacher someplace who promises his students like an A in the class if they find a hornwort, because every year, um, I get a couple of emails from someone in West Virginia saying, do you know where I can find a hornwort? And um, whenever I haven't come up with the one for them yet. Um, 
this is a picture of, of a picture of a hornwort. This is, and so you can see down here the, the it looks like a thallus liverwort at the bottom, and it has these sporophytes that look like horns. This is another hornwort that doesn't look very horny. It's got um, sporophytes that instead of sticking up like antlers or whatevs, they're actually they actually lay flat. And this could easily be mistaken for a uh, liverwort. So I made I made an over an overview sketch of it. So the sporophytes I'm going to go back. See the sporophytes are actually these little finger-like projections that lay flat and they just barely peek out. Um, so this is an easy one to not notice. It was growing on the edge of a soybean field. And um, mosses. So let's take a look at some uh, some mosses. Um, this is a a moss. So as I uh, mentioned before, detailed forthcoming about the um, persistent green part of a moss. Um, it's, uh, it's it's the gametophyte. It's leafy. It can be upright with small leaves, or it can be branched a lot with small leaves. And the sporophyte basically is a stalk with a little um, box on top that contains spores. And this is a picture of a moss called hair cap moss, the genus Poly Polytricum. Okay, so let's take a look at at uh, some lycophytes. These are vascular plants that are generally small. They're kind of, they have a lot in common with ferns. Some th they used to be called fern allies because of their similarity. And the similarity being that the two, the two stages in the life cycle are um, similarly configured with respect to each other. I mean, uh, this, the, what are called gametophytes are kind of small but independent, and this, what are called sporophytes are the part that you see that's the conspicuous part. So this is this is a picture of a club moss. Club moss. One word. Say it really fast. Club moss. And this is all what's called. This is all sporophyte. I'll, we'll, we'll explain that in detail, but I'm going to tell you now. This is all sporophyte. And um, this particular one is sometimes called ground pine, but it's totally not a pine. Pines are conifers. What is this? Bad common name plant. <laughs> and the spores are produced at um, in uh, the um, little axles of tiny reduced leaves that are arranged in this spiral, kind of like a cone or a club. It looks like a club, and it's these are that's why these are called club mosses. So these these cone-like arrangements of leaves with packs of spores in, in beneath them um, are is a club moss. So let's take a look at um, a fern. And ferns are the most, the most conspicuous and abundant seedless vascular plants. Here's a picture of a fern. And usually when you, when you see a fern, you're, most, you're seeing the leaves. The stems are typically under the ground. And um, the leaves are very elaborate, like um, compound, sometimes twice compound, sometimes three times compound. That's one of the ways to tell ferns apart is by how lacy they are. So this particular fern, which happens to be called polypody, uh, if you look at this picture, um, you can see that this leaf has these little spots underneath. They're actually pretty large spots underneath, because mostly they're smaller than that in most ferns. And these spots are clusters of little tiny uh, spore cases called, sp sp it's called sporangia. Those are the spore cases. The clusters are called sori. So in the next slide, um, this, each one of these is one of those spots that I pointed out in the earlier illustration. And each one of these little grains, I mean, I guess there's a couple of dozen in each one of these larger things. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sori, each of which contains about uh, a couple dozen sporangia. And each one of these, this is kind of dry and uh, most of them, maybe all of them, have released their spores, and that's um, what what the undersurface of a fern is. Many ferns produce their clusters of sporangia on the undersurfaces of leaves. Uh, gymnosperms, by which we mean conifers. So here's a picture of a pine cone, and um, this pine cone is a spirally arranged uh, group of 
uh, these repeating units. And each one of these repeating units um, can, uh, includes a pair of seeds. I think it's a pair. I bet you double check that. And the seeds, they might have a, a wing attached to them, but it, it, but they're not contained within anything. Um, the seeds are are naked. They're not they're not enclosed within within anything. They're just sort of exposed to the environment, perhaps with a wing around them, sort of embracing them, but not enclosing them. And that's because this conifer is a gymnosperm with naked seeds. And finally, the superstars of the plant kingdom, the angiosperms. Um, the, these are the only plants that produce flowers and these are the only plants that produce fruits. Angiosperms are sometimes called flowering plants. You know, they could also be called fruiting plants and it would be just as definitive. So here's a picture of a flower and on this flower, yeah, my yellow highlighter is great for my yellow flower, isn't it? Let's change the color. How about this color? Good. Um, uh, these structures here uh, are the are, are, are pollen producing structures they happen to be called stamens and um, this structure here is the part of the female part of the flower this is called a stigma this is where pollen lands to effect uh, what's called pollination this particular plant by the way is called um, cassia it's a prairie plant called uh, called uh, wild senna cassia hebicarpa so that's a quick little overview of the plant kingdom. Coming up next, eek, we're going to learn about the um, plant life cycles and um, delve into learning about chromosomes and, and ploidy levels and um, some technical stuff that you might remember from biology class. And it's going to come to life here in, um, in botany class. So um, thanks for watching. I'm not going to press this button.